Shakespeare, the great actor. Which way to the side of the grasshopper? Down the hill and ask again. Right. No, the sign of the grasshopper. Bear baiting. Give us sixpence. I'll lead you to the bear baiting. Sixpence. Sea dog strangled by the barley ape. in the house at Friars Market, me more is me. Get off. Ah, the grasshopper. <sighs> at last. Well, Will Shakespeare! Hey! Are yours, Master? Satisfying, Ingram. Mistress, I, I seek William Shakespeare. Shake who? I shake oh, you, me pan caterwauler. Go on, be off with you. Let poor folks sleep. Sleep? <laughs> well, it be on up at midday. Pray you, might I step inside and rest me cape on? It's every bird to carry. <laughs> well, friendly folks, you Londoners. Be off with you. Yeah, devil take you, mistress. Windows at Tyburn, friend. You may watch a quartering. Ah, come here, sir. Here are penny tensions and a cop fight. Get off with you. Oh. Hold on tight to that fine piece of poultry, clown, else it might vanish in the London smoke. Oh. In the and he was rumbling like a green bay tree. Uh, Rose Theatre, master. And there shall be an abundance of small fires, did you say, the theatre? Aye, oh, sir, the Rose Theatre. The theatre is a plague spot, sir. When it is a congregation of rogues and harlots who do but flatter with their lips and dissemble in their double heart. <laughs> Six! Augustine Phillips! Six. One Florine! Oh no, no! <laughs> Philip! I wrote yeah. you a fight, not a love scene. Well, the fight's unfinished. Thank your play, Master Marlowe. We're working at it. Oh, Ingram will have to show them. Go on, Ingram! Murder him! Now, what shall we be? Persians and Greeks? No, Protestants and Papists. Who is a Protestant? Oh, Ingram, he's the Queen's man, a creature of true respectability. How about him, Papists? How about you, my Lord Orthodox? Next! Alex Cook, one crown. Yes? Yeah. Ingram. Ah! Come along, Ingram. Three. Shades of Asia! What can ye daub at 20 miles a day? Stand still, Chuck. 
I'll never get this coat finished. My muse is on me, and I must rehearse. And have so proud a chariot at your heels, and such a coachman as somebody. I seek Master Shakespeare. Is he about? Who is this squeaking saw that interrupts my music? Oh, he's a fine man, sir, and a scholar. One that can write letters and speak learnedly of how the gods did couple in the sky and things like that. I didn't finish my play. Shake me in, be gone. Shake me in. Next, further in. Yes, Benjamin. Which hand do you write with? Right. Then Ingram lop up his left. We need a final act. Uh, you don't have this Master Shakespeare, sir. Come your ways, Yoko. We know no Shakespeare here. Hey, have a care, I pray. You mind the cape on? Oh. Sadler. William Shakespeare, large as life. Oh, forgive me, is this yours? Oh, it is. Well, it's not often a man finds a dinner by a Southwark horse trough. Why? Aren't you working at the theatre today? Oh, truly. I've played so many great parts lately, I claim a day of rest. Ah. Uh, that Mother Braxton's. Are you living there, Will? Well, I call her on occasion to read the scriptures to her daughters. Ah. Uh. Humble, pious girls, forever on their knees. Do you in know? Prayer, I could have sworn it was a boarding house. I uh, find them a convenient minute. house for the writing of letters. I'll bring you news from your loving family, Will. How does my wife Anne? How fares the she dragon? Oh, she's well, Will. Saving every penny you send her. Well, would she spend it? It's hard enough to find. Oh, not for you, Will. I've read your letters. Not for one of my Lord Strange's men. Not for the great player of London. And Stratford? Oh, all's well at home, William. Your daughter Susanna can can rhyme you a catch and bake a pastry beautiful. But as for young Hamnet... Hamnet? How does the my young man? Well, I wish he was a rascal. He never says a word to anyone. Still, he'll go out of it, I expect. Misses his father, would you say? <laughs> Here, it's for you. From your loving family. It's had its head chopped off at the theatre. <laughs> Born fed and fat-breasted. As I remember the girls of Chalcot. <laughs> Have you money in your purse? Half a crown, Will. Which I mean to spend in sack. Cake! My pretty cake! Cake tea, where are you? Oh. Yeah, cake! Cake tea! For a prank, for a merry stratagem, do you bring two cups of wine? Bow low over the table and say, Master Shakespeare, with a compliment, sir, of your fellow actor. Shake! Spear! Spear! I pray you remember the name. Shake! Spear! Shake! Spear! Shake! Spear! Hi, how do you? Hey, that be your actors, Will? Ah. Well, I never even glanced at you. Well, my applause somewhat outdid theirs after my death scene as Tamburlaine. Oh, your death scene, Will? Oh, yes, I die often as the tyrant, Tamburlaine. Oi, dang it. Well, I must go home on the wool cart tomorrow. Would you have died today? Oh, today we had a jig and a baldy tail done by the minor players. Oh. Uh, your good wife, Anne, she does love your letters. They're designed to please. Hey, read it to me, Will. Lord, I do love to hear a good letter. To my dear wife, Anne, at Stratford. Wish me well, my sweetness. 
is often as sweet as a draught of vinegar, but no matter. <laughs> For I'm now a voice in a cry of players. Hey, such a phrase. Oh, you should hear us, Chuck. We make the rafters ring with the boasts of Tamburlaine and the cries of his captive queen. Hey, captive queen's a fine phrase. I can read it for myself, but um, the study is something slow. Master Shakespeare, with the compliments, sir, of your fellow Axe. Well, dang it, that'd be generous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Katie. I tell you, lads, in his new piece, Kit Marlowe is to write me a death speech of some 50 stanzas. Think of it. 50 stanzas, our death overtakes me as Dr. Faustus. Great yeah, God, it doesn't overtake us too before you finish. <laughs> Dick Burbage, because you gabble your lines together. He uh, tries to imitate the speech of human beings. That's not the way, don'ts. We are not human beings. We are not pygmies. We, we are, are heroes. <laughs> Must we overplay to be heroic? <laughs> overplay? <laughs> overplay? <laughs> what is overplay? <laughs> hey, good fellows all. Oh. Hey, very good health to you. Oh. Hey, oh. Hey. Oh. 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 Uh, you're a past master writing letters, Will. Would I were a past master writing letters? Wait, what would you write? Well, there's a certain young widow woman that uh, works in the dairy at Wasperton. A man cannot do but love her, neighbour Will. Or even a married man, neighbour Hamlet. Right. Even a married man must have his feelings. There I must agree with you. If I could tell her how I do love her, then she must surrender to me. But I lack the words. I have it all but the words. Kate, my pretty Kate. Go bring us pen, ink, and paper. Why, Master Shakespeare, will you write us a play? Ed? Yeah? Will Master Marlowe never finish our new play? He will finish it. I shall keep him without girls, strong liquor, and Ingram Fraser. Oh, oh, miracle. He will have no uh, choice but right. Uh, by daylight, by the hour of cock crow, the body of Faustus is found torn and disfigured. The devil, gentlemen, has claimed his death. So perish all sinners. Not such a sinner. He had the right to sell his soul if he could get a fair price for it. What did he get, Akit? The lascivious mouth of Helen of Troy. <laughs> I could do as well with Joan, my serving wench, and still live in fair hope of salvation. He got the only two commodities worth striving for. What are those, in your opinion? Freedom to inquire and knowledge to reward the inquiry. As secretary of Her Majesty's secret intelligence, would you not agree with him, uncle? Knowledge gives us power. Is that not so? In a long life, I have found it so. Mm. You would agree, then, with a proud doctor in my play that the holding there is no sin, but ignorance. Well, that is a fine precept for a state. In a private man, it may seem something dangerous. Oh, my Lord Secretary, my Lord Circumspect, what a drab and doleful life it would be if it were not dangerous. I grew tired of our timid theatre. I wouldn't know where the crowns of paper and the blood and count of it. I long for your world, where the play is for life or death. And a Faustus may sell his soul for a kingdom, and not a penny ticket from the groundling. Well, does Her Majesty not pay her counsellors enough to keep the glasses filled with fire water? Fill Master Marlowe's glass in the, uh, the freezer, I beg you. So, Master Poet, you suppose you have a taste for our politics? I could devise craftier plots and write better speeches than a wagon load of your count. Perhaps, if you could learn to keep your ears open and your voice low. Hey, mind yours, Master. What are you doing, William? Horse tender. Oh, just for the moment. Only for the moment. I shall find work inside presently. But you said you were... You've been telling lies, William. That's not lies. 
just a pardonable exaggeration. Well, you like your good wife anyway. Well, lying to wives is often the best thing you can do for them, neighbor Hamnet. Damn me, all those letters. Lies? I told you, poetry. The truth of our dreams is no less true than... Well, I have to tell oh, Anne, anyway. I can't keep the truth from her, can I? Great is the truth, so mighty above all things. Boy, if I have the truth now, I shall have to tell your wife, Judith, the truth about you and the widow of Wasperton. Oh, her yeah. with the, uh, of churned butter and the, uh, yeah. of creamed milk. Now, Hamlet, we broadcast your doings in the dairy. Well, that will be best both keep silent, Will. And we best. But it was unneighbourly of you to tell us lies. It was unneighbourly of you to find me out. What's the give you? <laughs> Today's lies will be tomorrow's truth. As secretary to Her Majesty's Council, Sir Francis, are you not ashamed to offer these few paltry sovereigns to a man who has risked his neck on the Queen's secret business into Spain? <laughs> Necks are not so dear nowadays, Cody. I had not heard yours valued so high. But I have brought such secrets. I tell you, King Philip sits like a spider in his closet, sending out his spies to swarm in every priest's hole and confessional in England and to plot the death of our great Protestant queen. I give you a list of a hundred named English Catholics who must be smoked out as traitors. You have done good work, Poley. Five sovereigns worth of good work. Now, for five sovereigns more... What must I do? You may recruit me as someone in the pay of these learned Catholics. I have in mind a poet who may be our eyes and ears. A poet? A friend of my nephew's. Uh, One Christopher Marlowe. Uh, he has the metal for our work, has he, Thomas? Marlowe grows weary of stage plots. He longs for living dangers. He may serve us well, if he does not by cunning and subtlety overreach himself. He will spy for us, and you, Polly, must spy upon his spying. And if I do not? Necks are cheap, as I have already told you. How shall I know the same Master Marlowe? by his deep drinking and loud talking, and by a servant boy he keeps with him constantly. What boy? His name is Ingram Fraser. Hear you, Polly. Watch Fraser. Pied and violets blue, and lady smocks all silver white, and cuckoo buds 
of yellow hue do paint the meadows with delight. The cuckoo then on every tree mocks married men for thus sings he. Cuckoo, cuckoo, a word of fear, unpleasing to a married ear. Tragical history of Dr. Faustus. Would you be a player? I know a line or two. Speak up. I know a line or two. Do you by heaven? Huh? A learned horse tender. Oh, Saul, be changed into small water drops and, and fall, fall into, into the, the ocean. ocean. Never, Never be, be found. found. A poetic horse tender. Adders and serpents. Adders, Adders serpents and serpents. Can be breathed, can be breathed the a while. while. Ugly hell, get not. not. Come. Come not, Lucifer. I'll burn my books. Oh, Mephistopheles. Careful, Ned. This lad will steal your thunder. Ah, excellent boy. Your line will come after that. <laughs> my line? The cockcrow that marks the dawn. Pipe up then. I can bear a cockcrow. Will he need a costume? No costume, he'll be behind the curtain. What would you dress him in? Feathers? Drink, horse tender. Your promoted two boys behind the curtain. <laughs> now, once again, for all to hear, give us your rust of morning. Play what? Your cock crow, boy. <laughs> Try it again, brother. <laughs> With all your heart and love. <laughs> Is it not rare? Oh, rare, Cockrow. It will delight Kit Marlowe, that I promise you. But the Master Marlowe, we're here to listen to it. Cursed be the parents that engendered me. Oh, Faustus, curse thyself, curse Lucifer, that hath been now, boy. me of the joys of heaven. Hush talking, I'll miss my cue. Sure. What do you see, eh? It's right! The one-liner! Oh, You're a one-liner amongst the two and a half thousand beautiful verses that make up this play. This play? <laughs> two and a half thousand lines, not one jest. No jest! <laughs> They run about, that's what the author wrote. They laugh at gunpowder, scarcely the author's wit. Do you know who the author is? My one Christopher Marlowe. His lines are all lightning of tallow, candles and staged thunder. Oh, you shall suffer for that, boy! to a come. I sent for you yesterday. Leave murdering our chanted here, Christopher. It's the best copter in the theatre. Christopher, are you Master Marlowe? I'm with me, boy. Bring me my coach, my chair, my jewels. That's a fine death line for the Mad Queen in Tamburlaine. Well, I'm glad something meets with your approval. Well, I was moved when I read it. It had some truth. Kit, are you drunk or sober? Drunk, else I'd prick this blown-up bladder of conceit. How often must I tell you, Kit, one does not duel with actors. Actors are not gentlemen. 
Unless they play kings, of course. Certainly not if they play cocks behind the curtain. Now, we have so much gunpowder left over. What do you say to a chronicle historical? Our subject? The wars of York and Lancaster. I to play that sainted monarch, Harry the Sixth. I wonder why you seek out my company with such signs of favour. On Monday, to take you to the cockfighting. Tuesday, the bear bait. Last night, to dine at your lodgings on neat's foot and plump partridge. And today, present me with a suit of satins. Uh, more slender at the waist there, Taylor. Aye. Oh, what size you, master? Are you deaf, Taylor? Well, a man needs not a pair of these to make a pair of breeches. Primp in the waist! Look, so. Is it my breeding or my learning in the Latin tongue that you say I admire, Master Pole? Why, neither, my low-born ignoramus. Now, Master Marlowe. He's imprisoned. So soon. <laughs> Ned Allen has him under lock and key. Ned Allen? Well, he has a play to finish, you fool. I care not for his plays, but for his plots. What does Marlowe tell his Catholic acquaintance? <laughs> Why, faith, I know not. Most like that Moses drinks strong waters and the Holy Ghost plays cards for money. <laughs> Does he warn Catholics when they are watched by Her Majesty's Council? The fool will never hear us. You can't hear us, can you, fool? Come now, Fraser. Tell me, is Marlowe honest? As honest as any servant who draws wages from two masters. Will he run with both sides, then? For gold. It's not the girl he fancies. What then? I would say the sport. I hear the devil likes sport. You call him the devil? Do you hate him so? Well, less swelling at the belly. Would you make a woman of me? Help! I'm forbid! On pain of death! Who's that? My Lord Cockrell. Half a crown if you let me out, little Cockrell. Would you insult me? I'm not to be corrupted. Besides, I have the good of the theatre at heart. The play must be completed. The devil take the play. I am engaged to meet a great lord, one that might do you a service. Poor girl. She will be disappointed. When you blame me for ill jests, let me out, I tell you. When you have finished your stint, Master Marlowe. Right away, good Master Marlowe. Right. How am I to write this dull quarrel between baronial bullies? True, I have noticed your verse sometimes walks a little halting. Open the door, cockerel. So I might rip your belly. What sort of a bribe is that? Well, go write a scene locked in on a diet of dry ink and paper. It's impossible. How would you like it? Well, I might try to work it. Oh, would you, my lord impertinent? Oh, but then you have nice taste for a plot, good judgment of a line. Have I so? Hmm. When we first met, you showed yourself lord critical. Did I so? Well, perhaps if you tell me where you were defeated. Well, the scene is, uh, Temple Gardens. And what plays there? The barons are quarrelling. Before they pluck roses, they ask Lord Warwick to choose between them. Lord Warwick? He'd speak in the voice of my own county. What luck. You can help me. <laughs> <laughs> Judge you, my lord of Warwick, then, between us. Now, what would his answer be? Now, remember, they're two identical factions of baronial bullies with nothing to choose between them. Like two equal hawks. Or, or dogs, even. It's good. It's a good image. Now, give me a line. In verse? 
crow me a stanza if you can. Between two hawks, what? which flies the highest pitch? What? Between two hawks. Well, well, I, I can't. Uh, I can't perfectly hear you. Between two hawks, which flies the highest pitch? Between two hawks, which flies the higher pitch? Between two dogs, which hath the deepest mouth? Between two girls, which hath the merriest eye? How is it, Kit? How is it? It's astonishing, my lord and genius. Thank you, my lord, stuck. <laughs> You've leapt from the barnyard to Parnassus in one jump. Ah, oh, you're an ambitious rooster. What do you want most, eh? To be the truth now. To be one of Lord Strange's men, and to lend my hand with the playmaking. You'll take my place. Work at it now. No wine, mind you, no lewd girls or boys to act as fawns, just dry ink and unsensual paper. Between two girls, which are the merriest eye. Between two girls. Between two girls, which hath the merriest eye. But in these nice, sharp quillets of the law, good faith, I am no wiser than a door. Is that a lame run? If ye suppose that I have pleaded truth, from off this briar, pluck a white rose with me. Let him that is no coward nor no flatterer pluck a red rose from off this thorn with me. And so conduct me where from company I may revolve and ruminate my grief. <laughs> I shall revolve and ruminate my grief, said Ned. And they cheered so loud I thought the tower would tumble. And your line, undoubtedly. But my line, Kit. Oh, would that I had been there. And listened. And listened, Kit. <laughs> so still. You might hear a... a groundling belch. <laughs> And then, and then they cheered and threw up their sweaty nightcaps. You good little playwright, you're happy. Today. Master Secretary, please. Master Foley. With that, <laughs> no doubt. Your reports have not pleased him of late. Why, for your icy lord's sake, I've made friends with a dozen incense swinging complotters. Master Secretary, questions if you are not too close with the papers. I'll yield the mass to be a better theatre show than your dull Anglican drama. Ah, 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 careful. Your words are well noted. Well, I hope they make entertaining reading. You have charge of many secrets. Our secrets? And their secrets. Which shall become our secrets, too. Lock your tongue. Should not a poet speak poetry? That does no harm to anyone. No harm? For that, I grew weary of it. We have reports. From whom? Among many. From the butler to Sir Thomas Walsingham. Sir Thomas, my dear, subtle lord. His uncle taught me how to plod. 
Skiers, the butler, says you are often drunk, indiscreet at table. Drunk? I'm often drunk at table. <laughs> <laughs> and have been heard in taverns. Mm, calling for wine and making love to pot women. Hinting at the part you play, the small, shadowy part in the great affairs of state. Is a poet so shadowy? Like a shadow, a poet may go anywhere. He may dine with lords and sup with cutthroats. You are a useful ear, if you become a mouth also. Ingram, go and get another bottle of Rhenish. And don't bite at the goat. The landlady there reverses Christ's miracle and turns the wine into water. Oh, saving your presence, Master Foley. Well, you will take wine, won't you? No. I have business, of course. One more to more. The council have also heard of your words against the church. It's the wine speaking. Wine has no religion. It seems you see no good in heaven. I like not the thought of it. No friends. And in eternity, talking to the Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> 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 there will be a formal complaint. Their lordships will summon you. There's no great fear. As long as you can be trusted in other matters. Oh, I shall be silent. Do you be? That's the grave, Robert. Have you read it yet? How did you pass Tyburn? Oh, yes. Have you read my third part of Henry VI, Kit? No. They hung up the tutor that said a mass to the boy Earl of Southampton, and as they cut him down and opened him up, he sang them a Hail Mary. I'll say this for Catholicism, it gives you a good death scene. They go to both their religions. A canting, nose twanging, one clutch in the dark and you roast in hellfire hypocrisy, and the other sweet Latin incense burning. Do what you like, but pay the priest hypocrisy. And as they bludgeon each other to death, do you think a man's soul might creep to freedom, little Chanticleer? Hmm? Oh, to light tobacco with the book of Genesis. Doesn't that anger you, Master Poli? Sorry to disappoint you. There were Indians and Greeks in the world long before your God put down a naked man and woman and then cursed them for an act of natural affection. <laughs> ah, you grow angry, Will. I have no time for anger. I wanted your judgment of my play. You liar. You want my praise just as I want your... What, Kit? What do you want from me? Damn you, listen to me, Rooster. We live. We die. We suffer and they draw the innards out of us. What was your father? Glove maker in Stratford. I was a cobbler in Canterbury. We climb quickly to the top of the pile as poets. And then they kill us. <laughs> oh, they'll kill you too. Me? For what crime? Because your mind is free. Because they can put no chains on the thoughts of a poet. Ingram! Oh, Will, can you write no part for Ingram, please? He can play tendance and mine ruins. Might he not play Bona, sister to the French queen? He that loves not boys and tobacco is a fool. Ingram? Now, your play. Your play. Perfect. Truly carpentered. They will cheer and throw up their sweaty nightcaps. Hmm. Only one thing. What's that? Where are you? Where are you in your play, Will? I should be there? Well, just as I am Dr. Faustus, who sold his soul for a moment of idle curiosity. 
And that whole pile of paper, I know not who you are, what you love. Love? Hate. I love the theater. Oh, men don't love bare boards and painted faces. Who do you love? Apart from pot women. Hmm? I have a boy. A rascal son in Stratford. Him I love. Or nothing. Well, then, the worst you can imagine is... For a father to kill his son. Well, why not? In civil war, it could happen, such as in these, contention of the roses. It's not to be imagined. Then imagine it. Write me a scene. A soldier kills an unknown adversary. The helmet is off the corpse. Behold! His son! And while you write it, think of your rascal. Bring it to me tomorrow, no. No, there's no play tomorrow. It's the Feast of Ascension. We shall dine. Shall we? The inn on Deptford Strand, kept by a queen of pot women, Mistress Bull. Wrote my first couplet to her. There I will tell you if you are a playwright or but a job in carpenter. I shall not. What? Am I your hairdresser that you command a scene off me like a ounce of civet or a scented handkerchief? Will you strike your bell and I must crow for you, your little rooster? I have writ this great pile of paper alone without your stir. And while you slept or were at your toilet, I have become the maker of three plays historical with one more and a, 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 a comedy promised. And I am parted with our leading actors, Ned Allen and Burbage. Go on to your curling boy, obey you. I am my own poet now. Bring it to me at dinner time at Mistress Bull's tomorrow. I'll not come. I must leave London for my health. Why are you ill, Lord Vanity? I'm dying. We're all dying. For poets, it comes quicker than others. you've got by telling the council uh, of the Catholics and the Catholics of the council? Sure. Now, you once had a mess of coin stamped on both sides. Government gold, traitors gold. Is it all one to you? It glitters. <laughs> and does it glitter no more, Kit? I had thought to have enough to entertain you. I shall pay for all. You? England? I hate to mean, but... <laughs> Give me the reckoning. Ingram, the world is divided into the payers and the paid for. Step not out of the row written for you. I pay out When the hounds eat with wolves. That is when Ingram fries us, you'll buy my supper. My masters, my rich masters. What have you robbed? Church is a reputation. What have you sold? Black bodies. And now do rest today! He'd have cut us all to ribbons, wouldn't he? Thou that so stoutly hast resisted me, give me thy gold, if thou hast any gold, for I have bought it with a hundred blows. But let me see, 
Is this our foeman's face? Oh, no, no, no. It is mine only son. Oh, boy, if any life be left in thee, throw up thine eyes. See, see what thou hast arrived. It's very sad. It's very good. Eh, Jack? I only play dead people. I was a friend of his. From the theater. Will. Shakespeare. His cockerel. You're a poet, too. A playmaker. Poet, he said. He said you would be the next poet to stand in his shoes after he was gone. His shoes? Is this where he stood? He was a good man. Better than a good man. He led the way. We followed him like sheep. Well, he's dead. Dead shepherd. I'm dying. We're all dying. For poets, it comes quicker than others. <laughs> I'll bring you a fat duck. Did my poor deceived wife spent all on poultry? <laughs> I've kept your secret, Will. Your good lady knows nothing about your shame as a horse tender. Oh, well, you may tell all now. You may tell her the truth. Why, it'll break her heart, poor woman. You may tell her that I shall have six silver crowns for her come Whitsuntide, and the more folk pay to see my Harry the Sick than any other piece. And the Kit Marlowe, now being dead, I am a principal playmaker! Oh, may God forgive you, William Shakespeare. What terrible lies you do tell. Vanity on vanity, all is vanity, but what we know. quickly to the top of the pile as poets, and then they kill us. Oh, they'll kill you too. Because your mind is free, because they can put no chains on the thoughts of a poet. <laughs> 